Hi, I'm Jan. And I'm Debbie. And we're at the Hacienda Hills Country Club. And we're playing the Lakes to the Oaks, which is walkable. And I'll show you how. So here's the view from the starter shack and you've got the lakes on the right and the oaks on the left and those are both tee boxes and they run parallel to each other all the way down to the green. Many of the courses instead of having a driving range they have these cages that you can warm up and swing your club. And then of course a putting green. And that's where you check in and pay and get on your way. Now, unfortunately, there is no clubhouse here currently at Hacienda, so nowhere to buy shirts, tees, balls, anything like that. Uh, the only thing you can get at that starter shack is like pops, iced tea, water, and some snacks. Some snacks, yeah. This is the first hole on the lakes, and it's a pretty short par five. You have water on the left and a line of trees, and then you have sand on the right, so just be right in the middle is a good start. And I have to say, I do love Hacienda as a course. It's a beautiful course, but I was a bit disappointed in the condition when we played. Yeah. It's a few dollars cheaper than the other courses, but my first ball, this is where I landed, right in this dirt stuff, and that's not a normal course condition. Here's another really unique feature that I've not seen on any other golf course, and it's the only one in the villages, but you share a giant green. So that pin back there is for the oaks, and we were on the lakes, and so everybody's hitting to the same giant green. And they're both par fives. Yes, very cool though. Now this one's a little tricky because if you try to take a shortcut, you land in the sand, if you go too far right, you could be right up against the villas on the right hand side. So you gotta kind of place your ball in order for your second shot that's a dog leg to the left. Yes, right over that sand trap is the best place to be, but if you can't clear the trap, it's a problem. This is a short par three, um, really no trouble here, except just you gotta plan it right in between the sand traps. That's your biggest challenge out here. So today I decided to use my pull cart or push cart, if you will. And this is one of the courses you can do this because it's not as long between um, holes. So it's it's very walkable, so is Tierra and um, Orange Blossom. It's a great way to get some extra exercise. This hole's kind of a fun hole. Uh, there's those two really tall skinny palm trees in the middle, so a lot of people make bets with their golf mates to see who can get a field goal through there. And I challenge you to do the same. It right. actually would be a good shot if you did. Right, and there used to be three there, but I think that third one on the left that's gone now was hit quite a bit, so they, they took that guy down. Yeah, your biggest hazard on this hole, obviously, is the water off to the right. So if you slice, you could be in trouble. But if you make a field goal, you'll usually end up in safe territory. And here's some more of our spectators. Between four and five, you will have to cross the street to go to the restroom because that's the only one there, and that's you also use that on the oaks. This hole is one of the more challenging holes, I think, on this course. It's long. It's long, and you need to stay to the right. To the left, there's some homes and a bunch of trees. There is room over there, but if you get in those trees, you just can never get out because it does dog leg left. So you definitely want to put that ball out to the right and come in from that way. If you go too far right though, there is a pond up closer toward the green. Don't slice.
A long number six and seven and eight, there is a multimodal cart path, path for walkers, bikers, and runners, and it runs along on this hole, these villas. And so it sometimes does look like people are out on the golf course in your way, but they're actually well within where they're supposed to be. Right. So you will see a little bit more traffic, a little more activity, activity around this golf course. This is also unique to Hacienda. This hole is also kind of a break. It's pretty straightforward, yep. not a lot of challenges. The thing with Hacienda is this is one of the more narrow courses here in the villages. And because it was built in 1990, it's one of the older courses. With the mature trees. Lots and, of mature landscape. And that's really nice on a really hot day. Exactly, yep, good places to hide. And here's a view of the green on the seventh hole. And as you can see, their home's right behind it. And then when we're panning over to the right, that's gonna be the par three, which is the eighth hole. And now we're on the par three, and it's, it's a pretty short par three, and it has a, a bigger opening to get between those two sand traps. And then on over to the ninth hole. And this hole is a really long hole, pretty straight, but it is long. Um, I love this hole because I just feel like you have wide openings and a lot of room to just let it fly. Yep, there's a lot of space there between the trees. Um, and just stay there, otherwise there's a lot of trees on both sides. And lots of homes. So that was one of the things that the villages did a lot of is building homes right along the golf course. So they all have very nice views. Very nice. And here we're finished on number nine. And the best thing about living in the villages is it's a great place to have a great time with, with great, great friends. friends.